Hey guys, here's your video on section 4.8 applications and models. So after you're done watching the video, you should be able to solve a right triangle and solve application problems. So when I say solve a right triangle, what you're doing is you're solving for all of the missing sides and all of the missing angles. It is very helpful if you actually draw a triangle to start. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a triangle over on the side. And I'm going to draw this triangle every single time I have one of these problems. Um, I'm going to label my angles. Angles we label with capital letters, so that's A, B, and C. And sides we label with lowercase letters. So side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, and side C is opposite angle C. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that same triangle for letter A. As I'm drawing, I'm also going to start to label things. So I have A, B, and C. So I know that angle B is 54 degrees, so I can label this side as 54 degrees. I know side C is 15, so I can go ahead and label that side being 15. So what I'm missing is I'm missing angle A, I'm missing side A, and I'm missing side B. Now, angle A is easiest to solve for because the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So for angle A, I'm just going to do 180 minus 90 minus 54. So 180 minus 90 minus 54 is 36 degrees. I don't know why I wrote 360, 36 degrees. So I have angle A being 36 degrees. Now another way that you can do that is, since this is a right triangle, you do know that this is 90 degrees. So angles A and B will always have to add up to 90 degrees. So you can just do 90 minus 54, and that still gives you the 36 degrees. Okay, so we have angle A. So the last two things we need are side A and side B. So I'm just going to pick one of the sides that I want to solve for. I'm going to go ahead and solve for side A. Now I'm going to use the information that was given to me. So the information that was given to me was angle B and side C. And I want to see if there's a trig function that can relate these two sides to that given angle. So I'm looking at Sokotoa again. So my side A is adjacent to 54 degrees. My side uh, C, which is 15, is the hypotenuse. So I'm looking for a trig function that uses adjacent and hypotenuse, and that's going to be cosine. So I'm going to do cosine of 54 equals my adjacent side, which is side A, over my hypotenuse, which is 15. I can go ahead and cross multiply. So that gives me 15 cosine of 54 degrees equals A. I can plug that into my calculator, double check the mode to make sure you're in degree mode. So 15 cosine of 54 is 8.82. So now I have side A being 8.82. Last thing I need to do is solve for side B. Since I do know two of the sides of the right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for side B. So I have 15 squared, because that's my C squared, equals A squared, which I now know is 8.82, plus B squared. So I have uh, 15 squared, I'm going to solve for b squared, so 15 squared minus 8.82 squared gives me 147.2076 equals b squared. So now I'm going to take the square root, and that gives me 12.13. All right, so now I have all three sides and all three angles. For letter B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start by setting up my triangle. 
I have angle A, B, C. C is always your right angle. I know side A, I know side A is 25. So that's the side that's opposite angle A. Side C is 35. And what I'm missing is I'm missing angle A, angle B, and side B. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve for side B first uh, because, you know, I have two sides of a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So that's 35 squared equals 25 squared plus B squared. So 35 squared minus 25 squared is 600. So that equals B squared. So B is the square root of 600, which is 24.49. Um, from there, I'm going to go ahead and choose between angle A and angle B. It doesn't matter which one you solve for. I'm going to go ahead and solve for angle A. And what I want to do is I want to pick a, a trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent, that relates this angle to these two sides. So 25 is opposite angle A, and 35 is hypotenuse, so I'm using a trig function that uses opposite and hypotenuse. Well, sine uses opposite and hypotenuse. So I'm going to set this up as sine of A equals my opposite side, which is 25, over my hypotenuse, which is 35. Now anytime I'm solving for an angle, I'm going to use the inverse trig function. So A is equal to the inverse sine of 25 over 35. And I can take that and plug it into my calculator. So inverse sine of 25 over 35 gives us 45.58 degrees. And now that angle A is 45.58 degrees, I can solve for angle B. Since I know that angles A and B add up to 90 degrees, since angle C is already 90 degrees. So I'm going to take 90 minus 45.58 So 90 minus 45.58 is 44.42 degrees. So again, solving a right triangle means you're solving for any of the missing sides or any of the missing angles. The next thing we're looking at are application problems. So there are two buildings that are 250 feet apart. A surveyor is standing on top of one of the buildings, which is 300 feet tall, and may measures the angle of depression to the top of the other building as 15.75 degrees. Find the height of the other building to the nearest tenth. So let's go ahead and draw a picture. You got two buildings. We know that the surveyor is standing on top of the taller building because it says it's an angle of depression. Angle of depressions are angles from the horizontal down. So this angle right here is the 15.75 degrees. What I also know is that the building is 300 feet tall so I'm going to label this side as 300 feet. And I know that the distance between the two buildings is 250 feet. So that's this distance right here. Okay, 250 feet. All right, so what I can do is I have a right triangle. Here's my right angle. Now my angle of depression is not actually in my triangle yet, so I can figure out what this wedge is, this one right here, and have that angle be inside my triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and take 90 minus 15.75, and that gives me 74.25 degrees. Okay. 
So now I have an angle inside the triangle. I have my side of 250. And what I'm actually going to solve for is this side over here. I'm going to solve for this distance. And the reason why I'm going to solve for this distance is because that's the difference in the heights of the taller building versus the smaller building. So I'm going to pick a trig function. I have my opposite and my adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I'm going to do tangent of my angle, which was the 74.25 degrees, equals opposite over adjacent. So 250 over x. I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. That gives me x tangent of 74.25 equals 250. So x is going to be 250 divided by tangent of 74.25 degrees. Alright, going to plug that into my calculator. So 250 divided by tangent of 74.25 gives me 70.5 feet. So the actual height of the second building is going to be 300 minus 70.5 feet, which is 229.5. Uh, For the next one, a forest service helicopter spots two fires due east of their position. The helicopter is flying at an altitude of 2,500 feet and measures the angle of depression to the first fire as 10.42 degrees and to the second fire as 43.67 degrees. Find the distance between the two fires to the nearest tenth of a mile. Okay, so we have this helicopter. You gotta excuse my drawings, they are not the best. There's a helicopter flying in the sky. Um, and he spots two forest fires. So he has, he sees one over here. And one over there. So here's forest fire number one. And forest fire number two. Okay, so it says the angle of depression to the first fire is 10.42 degrees, and to the second fire is 43.67 degrees. So again, angles of depression, that's from the horizontal down. So the smaller angle is actually this angle. So this is forest fire number one, and this is forest fire number two, because the angle of depression is only 10.42 degrees. And then the other angle of depression to the second fire is this one right here. As you can see, that angle is bigger. And that measure is 43.67 degrees. What else do we know? We know that the helicopter is flying at an altitude of 2,500 feet. So this distance right here is 2,500 feet. Now, it looks like we have a lot going on, so I'm going to go ahead and separate my two triangles. So the first triangle I have is going to be this one. And the second triangle I have is going to be this one. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to solve for the distance between the two forest fires. So I'm trying to solve for this distance. Okay, so if you look at the way that I drew the purple line, it's a weird looking question mark. There you go, that's better. If you look at the way that I drew the purple line, that's this distance right here. Okay, so what I can do is I can solve for this entire distance and then get rid of this piece. Okay, that's kind of what I'm going to go for. But again, I'm going to go ahead and set up my two triangles. So my first triangle in the pink looks like this. It 
where that angle right here is 43.67. Now, the height of 2,500 feet will also be this height and this height. So I can just take that 2,500 feet and shift it over. So that means this side of the triangle is 2,500 feet. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue triangle. except I know that this angle is 10.42 and this side is 2,500 feet. Now I'm going to say that this distance on my pink triangle is X and this distance on my blue triangle is Y. And those are going to be the two sides that I solve for. And that's going to help me solve for that purple. Okay, so for my pink I have my opposite and my adjacent, so opposite and adjacent is um, tangent. So I have tangent of 43.67 equals 2,500 divided by x. I can cross multiply, solve for x, essentially a little shortcut, you can just switch these two, um, but that equals 2,500 divided by tangent of 43.67. I'm going to plug that into my calculator, so 2,500 divided by tangent of 43.67 is 2,618 point eight. For the blue, I'm going to do the same thing. So again, I have my opposite and my adjacent. So I'm going to use tangent again. So I have tangent of 10.42 equals opposite over adjacent. Again, a little shortcut. I can go ahead and just switch those two out. So I get y equals 2,500 over tangent of 10.42. I'm going to plug that into my calculator, so 2,500 divided by tangent of 10.42 is 13,594.7. And right now our distances are in feet. So this is feet and this is feet. Okay. Now just to refresh on what we were solving for, the question says to find the distance between the two fires. That's what I have in the purple. I now know this distance, and I know this distance. So if I'm trying to solve for the purple, I can take the longer distance minus the shorter distance. So the distance between the fires is y minus x. So that's 13594.7 minus 2618.8 which is 13594.7 uh, shoot I plugged that in wrong. Try that again. 13,594.7 minus 2,618.8 gives me 10,975.9 feet. And of course the problem didn't ask for feet because that would be too simple to just finish right now. It asks for miles. So it says the nearest tenth of a mile. So I'm going to take this and divide it by 5,280, since that's how many feet are in a mile. And that gives me 2.1 miles. So the two fires are 2.1 miles apart from each other. Oh, it's a long problem. Alright, so that concludes your notes for section 4.8, Applications and Models.